So I want to do a response to Shamsi's video uh, that he gave at Speaker's Corner, which was in some way supposed to be a response to uh, the, the argument that I made from the hadiths in which Muhammad clearly stated that water uh, was not uh, polluted by anything and that um, Muhammad instructed some of his followers that they could perform their ablutions at a well that had rotting dogs carcasses, human feces and menstrual towels. Um, now, for what strange reason that baffles me, uh, Shamsi said, tried to compare this tiny well in Medina to um, the vastness of the ocean. How many people go to the seaside and they go to the beach and urinate and do feces? And you have no problem to go swim inside? Yeah. No. Nah. Why? Because you know, because there's a lot of water will purify that. And that just doesn't follow at all. The, the well in question is in an extremely small well. Um, and it can't be compared to a free-flowing body of water. It's a well. Um, but on the back of that, uh, Shamsi goes on to quote some scholars. Now, these scholars are unnamed, but essentially Shamsi quotes a ruling that says that... If the water smells different, then you're not allowed to use it as means of purification. If the water, the colour changes, same thing. And if the water taste changes, it's the same thing. So why the hadith is that that shows you in that well, the water is a lot. So that impurity does not affect it. And the reason um, I imagine that he's doing that is to defend the idea of what Muhammad said in terms of the ablutions with the well. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused as to how uh, rotting dogs carcasses, menstrual towels and human feces wouldn't affect the well in question. And then Hadith may, uh, Shamsi made reference to another Hadith uh, in which um, apparently this well is said to be clean, but he didn't actually quote it, so I await for you to quote that reference for Shamsi. However, if Shamsi is using the defense of the scholars to defend um, Muhammad's statement that nothing makes water impure, um, then basically his scholars are contradicting Muhammad. Because Muhammad said nothing makes water impure, but the scholars are saying if something changes its odour, its colour or its taste, it's impure. Can't be used for um, wudu. So then the obvious question follows um, Shamsi. Um, who's right, your prophet or your scholars? Because the two don't seem to agree. So please bring forward the hadiths that you want to reference to demonstrate that this ruling made by the scholars is coming from Muhammad rather than just the scholars making something up. But then what do you do with odorless, colourless, tasteless poisons um, that would obviously contaminate water? You know, it's a very extreme example. Um, but such substances exist. Now, I did think about whether to, to name one of these substances, but um, it, the, the, these things can be researched and found very easily on Google, so I'm, I'm going to say one of these substances, such as themaline. Themaline is a highly toxic substance, but it's odorless, so it wouldn't affect the smell of water. It's tasteless, so it wouldn't affect the taste of water, and it is colourless, so it wouldn't affect the colour of water. So that passes the three tests given by your scholars. But it's poison and toxic, hugely toxic, incredibly toxic. And what's worse is it can be absorbed through the skin, you don't even need to drink it. So if you actually perform wudu with water contaminated with themaline, you die. Now according to your scholars, who are obviously, I guess, working from what Muhammad's saying, then, then water cannot be made impure by anything, but clearly it can, and it is made impure even by things that are odourless, colourless and tasteless. There's a more obvious conclusion that you should come to, Shamsi, which is that your prophet wasn't on a direct hotline to God and he didn't know about themaline, and he doesn't know about water contaminants and pathogens being passed into water which then can enter into the human body and he didn't know because he's not a prophet and God wasn't speaking to him and then you talked about in your bible God said to the Israelites in Ezekiel use your human feces to cook food 
Yes, it's in the Bible. Whoa. It's accurate. Use your human feces or the animal feces to cook food. So, uh, so, so I believe uh, Bob and other Christians they're more clean than God. What that is actually talking about is a series of prophetic acts that God instructed Ezekiel to do to be a testament, a prophetic witness to what God was going to do to Israel. These are in no ways instructions to the rest of us. So you are trying to create a false comparison between God giving specific instructions to Ezekiel to, for him to do in his time as a, a prophetic testimony against the people of Israel showing what God is going to do with the fact that your prophet instructs his followers to do things and your prophet makes claims that are scientifically bogus. I pity you, Shamsi, that, that you, you have to try and duck so low to rescue your prophet. But I don't know if I pity your audience more that they actually take your argument seriously. And I would challenge you uh, to actually read Ezekiel properly and to stop being disingenuous to your Muslim audience. And I would encourage Shamsi's audience to actually pick up a book and go and read because you're being completely misled by the person that you're watching on YouTube.